Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to answer one of the more common questions that I'm being asked uh, on my channel and also on Facebook and that's of course what would happen if you switched the position of Mars and Venus. For some reason many people want to know what would happen and today we're going to answer that and also just generally talk about where would Venus have to be for it to be really comfortable and terraformable. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So here is Venus and here is Mars and there's Earth right between them and uh, what I wanted to actually start with is by showing you that all of these objects are actually located in what's known as the habitable zone which is right there, right there it's the green zone. Uh, Venus is just on the border and uh, Mars is sort of on the outskirts with, with Earth being somewhere basically in between. Now, this is not exactly super accurate but Venus is supposed to be part of the habitable zone as well. Now, what I wanted to do is first start by switching Mars and Venus in terms of their orbit and just seeing what would happen. My guess is that not much because first of all, Mars doesn't really have enough atmosphere for it to get much warmer and Venus has so much atmosphere that it's already super hot. As a matter of fact, this is the hottest planet. But let's just go under the settings here and change Venus's uh, orbit into this 1.52 astronomical units with a 9% eccentricity. And Mars will get 0.723 astronomical units with 1% um, eccentricity. And here we go. So there they are. So there is the new Mars in the orbit, uh, much, much closer to the Sun, receiving a lot more solar radiation than it did before. And obviously, possibly losing a lot more atmosphere because it doesn't really have a magnetic field to protect its atmosphere. So here uh, we're going to have not much difference but surprisingly the surface temperature is now 27 degrees celsius it used to be like minus 50 ish now it's 27. but despite the surface temperature being somewhat comfortable there is still no atmosphere and watch what happens if i actually do add just enough atmosphere for us to survive let's just add 70 percent atmospheric pressure which is basically just enough for a human being to kind of survive and suddenly the surface temperature jumps dramatically to over the boiling point of water. So in this particular region, it will be very, very difficult for us to have a habitable planet with liquid water because the temperature would be way, way, way too high for, uh, for us to survive. So that's not going to work. Let's go to Venus, see what happened to it. It used to have a temperature of over 470 degrees Celsius. And now the temperature has decreased to about 269 degrees celsius so basically close to about a half but still very very hot so let's maybe move venus a little bit further and find out where exactly would this temperature be somewhat close to the temperature of earth which is about 15 degrees celsius so, uh, the average uh, temperature on earth is about 14 to 15 degrees so we're going to aim at that so we're going to uh, go to motion and let's increase this to about three astronomical units basically a lot closer to jupiter so we're now a lot closer to Jupiter, but still um, far enough away from everything else. As a matter of fact, we're now kind of part of the asteroid belt. So if we were to place Venus in the asteroid belt, its temperature would then drop to about 113 degrees Celsius, 112. So still very, very hot. And this is mostly because the atmospheric pressure here is 91.3 times higher than the atmosphere on Earth. So still very, very hot. Let's move it closer to Jupiter. Let's go to about four astronomical units. So it is now a lot closer to Jupiter, meaning that it's going to get a lot more gravitational influence from it. But uh, it's uh, not in the asteroid belt anymore. And it's definitely um, somewhere in its own sort of space. And the temperature has now decreased to a more comfortable 36 to 37 degrees on average. So that's still kind of hot because this is average, meaning that it can go as high as 50 degrees or as low as 10 degrees in some, in some other locations. I guess the polar, uh, the polar regions of Venus. So maybe we need to move it even closer to Jupiter. Let's actually just place it at the orbit of Jupiter. In other words, at 5.2 astronomical units. So we're going to change this to 5.2. And uh, let's see what the temperature gets to. And look at that. It's now at 12 degrees Celsius, which is very, very similar to the temperature on Earth, which is about 15 
14 to 15 degrees. So this is actually an, a somewhat comfortable world. So if we were to place Venus uh, essentially where Jupiter is located, we would get a temperature that's kind of nice. Obviously, there's still a lot of things wrong with the Venusian atmosphere, such as a lot of um, sulfuric acid, a lot of really deadly gases, very high atmospheric pressure, even though this is not really a big deal, because normally humans uh, do not have trouble with the high atmospheric pressure, they usually have problem with the low atmospheric pressure. And uh, a lot of other things here can actually cause uh, us problem, like for example, there's no water. But let's just add a little bit of water here creating both the um, atmosphere and also, uh, I believe, some liquid water here. We're just going to add a little bit more. And here we go. This looks pretty good. So this is Venus with oceans and with everything else, including the atmosphere. But it still kind of looks like this, though. You still cannot see the surface. And this is with a relatively comfortable temperature of about, close to about 15 degrees Celsius. And essentially, this is now a somewhat terraformed world with a relatively high atmospheric pressure, of course, but there's still a problem. So, you know, how do we actually get this planet into this region? And how do we get all the water to it? And I guess the um, easiest solution is to maybe smack something into it, like Ceres, for example, that already has water. But that, of course, would be very difficult. Moving a planet to a completely new region requires a tremendous amount of energy. And I'm going to demonstrate this to you by um, starting the new simulation here and trying to move Venus, I'll show you how much uh, energy we need to move Venus to the location where Jupiter is. So, and so to transfer Venus to the orbit of Jupiter, which is right here, we need to initiate what's known as the Hochman's orbital transfer maneuver. This is how we usually transfer things like satellites and spacecraft as well. So here, we need to first increase the velocity from 35.2 to about... There we go, to about 48.3. So that's about 13 kilometer per second change in velocity. Once that happens, Venus is going to transfer itself to the new orbit. And then we need to decrease, or oh, sorry, not decrease, but increase velocity again to circularize the orbit. So the total delta V required for us is actually quite high. It's close to about 25, 26 kilometers per second. And this is a very, very massive object. So doing so would require tremendous amounts of energy. I don't think we even have enough energy to, to be able to initiate this just yet and possibly not in the next hundreds of uh, years either. We won't be able to initiate such a maneuver. Uh, and so here, once we actually circularize this, Venus will then acquire uh, an orbit in the position where Jupiter is. So let's find out how do we, uh, or what can we do to change the velocity of Venus by essentially at least one kilometer per second? Can we at least get one kilometer per second by maybe smacking something into it? So we're going to slow down time here, go under the velocity. We're looking at this right here. Uh, it's currently 35.3. We want it to be about 48 something. Let's uh, smack Ceres. Ceres has water. Ceres is relatively massive. It's relatively close. It's in the asteroid belt. And it would also obviously give Venus a boost if it were to smack down from behind. So we're looking at 35.3 kilometers per second. Let's see if it actually increases. Uh, you can see it decreasing because of the pool, the gravitational pull of Ceres from behind. But as soon as it collides, it will give Venus a boost. But by how much? We don't really know yet. And here we go. So we need it to be 48. It will not be 48. I can guarantee. But this is really interesting so here we go 35.3 still hasn't really increased by much all right how about if we launch mars would mars actually give uh, our venus enough boost to basically escape so we're going to launch mars from over here here it comes and the velocity will now increase oh look at that 73 kilometers so mars definitely gives us enough boost and even more so than we need so we need to find something in between let's start with mercury so collision from Mercury would very likely give us just enough boost. And we're going to find out if this becomes 40 something. Still a lot more than we need. So both the Venus, uh, so both Mars and Mercury do give us enough boost, even more so than we need. Uh, so obviously colliding a planet into Venus would not be a good idea, but look how beautiful this is. Such beautiful waves spreading through the entire Venusian surface. All right, so how about something a little bit bigger than Ceres, but a little bit smaller than Mercury? 
for example, our own moon. Let's launch moon and see if it actually does enough. Not enough. Definitely not moon. How about Titan? Looks like if we were to launch or somehow reposition Titan and launch it from behind Venus, it would provide just enough velocity for us to uh, transition to the orbit of Jupiter. And then we'll need to do this again to slow it down and to circularize the orbit. Obviously, a lot of this is very, very complicated. It would require a tremendous amount of energy to even try to reposition Titan. Uh, but this gives you an idea that, you know, repositioning planets in, um, in orbit is ridiculously complicated and very, very, very energy consuming. It might be easier for us to obviously terraform Venus in other ways, like, for example, changing its atmosphere completely and maybe uh, creating a magnetosphere while also helping it reflect some of the light so it's not as hot. And so essentially, hopefully this answers both of your questions. What happens to Venus and Mars if you switch their positions? And also, can we actually reposition Venus to make it more terraformable? Is it even possible? And I guess the answer to all of these questions is, well, not really. It, it's a lot easier to do other things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you enjoyed the collisions as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Come back tomorrow to learn something new and to possibly watch me teach you something using video games. See you later, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And it just so happens that I think I gave my Venus the escape velocity of our solar system, so it's not going to be orbiting in the path of Jupiter uh, after all. Which also makes me wonder, what if I were to actually collide uh, Titan from the other side, going the opposite direction, slowing Venus down in its track? What would that do to its orbit? And its velocity has decreased dramatically, changing the orbit into, let's see, into, wow, it's even closer to the sun than Mercury is, and has a very eccentric orbit where it passes by the sun relatively close. This is actually pretty interesting. So here's our new Venus, the world that basically heats up dramatically when it's closer to the sun and cools down, down to about 400 degrees, 500 degrees Celsius, when it's a lot farther away from the sun. And so that's definitely a completely newly transformed Venus that I didn't really expect that I would be able to create. So here's the old Venus's face, and here's the new Venus's face. That's a pretty cool world I've created. Anyway, see you later. Bye-bye.